Welcome to the Birth Launch Podcast, an empowering space for expecting and new parents to hear candid conversations with experts and learn how to craft your ideal birth. Hey y'all, and welcome back to another episode of the Birth Lounge Podcast. Today I have my friend Kayla Bitten on with me, who is a student midwife and also the founder of the Postpartum Clinic, which we will talk about at the end of the episode, um, but it is a breastfeeding clinic, a postpartum support center in Birmingham, Alabama, which... Roll Tide. You guys know I love Alabama. I'm from down there. We also love Dr. Stephanie Mitchell, who is the founder of the Birth Sanctuary. A lot of cool things happening in Alabama to help get people in Alabama in the South, kind of, because people will drive for this kind of support because it's so not a thing. Alabama, your stuff is coming, I promise. And today I'm so excited to talk about Kayla or talk with Kayla about how we're getting this breastfeeding support down there to Alabama. So Kayla, Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Can we start with what is the basic history of breastfeeding in America? I always say in order to know where we need to go, we need to know where we came from. And so when it comes to lactation specifically, um, I teach a lot about the history of of lactation and how we know things um, or we should know things such as, you know, the enslaved people who were forced to lactate um, or body feed and breastfeed the children of the slave masters. um, And a lot of times didn't have enough milk um, or energy or anything for their own babies. And so we will be left to give goat's milk or cow's milk. And that's kind of where that came from. But when talking about that, I also talk about how not only do we have this like ingrained thing, it's almost like ancestral, like it's in our DNA now because of the history that we've been through, the abusive, like really gross history um, within this country. But I talk a lot about too, you have to then take that and then remember the marketing and the strategies and a lot of the things that have happened and continue to happen when it comes to commercializing things and make, um, trying to make it accessible. But a lot of times it was a lot of exploitation. So for instance, um, I talk about Nestle, for instance, we all know who Nestle is. Nestle has like, is, is a company in like 80 different countries and like they're huge. Right. But there was this huge part where they would specifically go to Africa, um, or specific parts of Asia, um, these different areas and really market their, um, their formula to folks of color and their babies and how that left a huge, ridiculous impact. And it's a very gross history um, when it comes to that. But I talk about, yeah, like the enslavement and all the things that we have to go through. Um, It was a class thing for, um, you know, white folks essentially not to be seen lactating or breastfeeding their own kids so we were forced to do it then we come out of that because slavery is supposed to be abolished but now we are a slave to consumerism and so now you see in the commercials how they're again like this exploitative piece this huge piece that's connected to it and then you learn the history of how they were marketing in certain neighborhoods in America formula was so the history is very very long and it still continues to this day we still see a ridiculous amount of marketing um that is really deeply rooted in exploitating blackness essentially so explain to us what was the point of nestle going into the black and asian countries in order to exploit them what did nestle gain what was their marketing technique what were they selling these parents who i assume instead of needing nestle they needed support money they gained money. They gained the the fact that folks can say, oh, I use Nestle. So the things that they passed out, they looked like little flyers um, that they passed out. It had a picture of a, a little black baby on it and, and, you know, sign up here to come get your formula or do this or do that. And you can get formula from here. Um, it's better than mother's oh. milk. Then they did the, the research. They noticed that there was this like ridiculous amount um, of babies that were dying, but did a ridiculous percentage of like malnutrition, like all these things. And notice that it's because within these specific areas, Nestle was mar- uh, targeting them to market the formula, but it did create this um, lawsuit essentially is what I guess you can call it where they, they went in depth and it's, uh, it's accessible on the, on the internets um, where you can go to and you can read through this brief, essentially like pages and pages and pages long, just detailing the, 
the harm that, you know, Nestle had caused, detailing how they would market, detailing the photos of the actual um, flyers that they would send out. Why do you have this little black baby on here? Like, why do you, why did you do that? So yeah, what did they gain? Money. They gained control um, and a monopoly over the, um, over healthcare essentially, but a monopoly over, no, don't do this. Give you, give us your money, give us your resources so that we can give you this. And again, Nestle has, it's in like 80 different um, countries, 80 different locations, like huge situations. So that's what they gain over the years, if you think about it. Okay. So I'd like to go back to the, the topic of Black slaves having to feed their white master's children. Two things I'd like to hit on. It actually caused a lot of Black infant deaths um, because of that. Is that correct? Right. Okay. And then it's odd to me, not so much odd, I suppose, but it is ironic how it went from a uh, a thing of wealth and status that you don't breastfeed your kids to now the opposite. It's uh, if you have access and money and insurance to get reimbursed and the good lactation counselor down the street, rather than not having one for two hours, that now is a thing of status and wealth and not breastfeeding your children is the exact opposite. See, now that's equity, I think. Um, you know, we talk about equality, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so yeah, now we're in the age where everything's equal. If I'm black, I can drink from the same water fountain. If you drink from the water fountain because you're white, like no one gives a shit about equality. It's about equity. And so you notice that there's that flip, right? And so over the <clears throat> over the, the decades, it did go from, you know, white folks not wanting to be seen. They, they wouldn't be called dead latching their own kid. Um, they would get pregnant alongside the enslaved person so that the enslaved person who's already producing, you know, this prolactin and all this milk can then give it over to their kid versus their own. So it was a whole thing. It was a whole process. It was a literal, there's a, there was a science to it. It's declasse if you happen to latch your kid. Um, <clears throat> so the, 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 yeah, the coin has flipped and now that's the thing. And so now that's a white person thing to do within our community. You know, there's a lot of things that we go through mentally within our community, but it is a thing that we attach. That's a white thing to do. If you have the opportunity and the privilege to latch your kid, that's a white thing to do, because then you have to think about the other obstacles. And again, this is equity. because You have to think about the other obstacles. I'm a working class black chick in Alabama. Like I'm not about to latch my kid or come home for my 15 minute if I even get that because I need to latch. We used to think it was equality. Well, we have the right to do this as much we do. Um, but equity rise, there are a lot of things that are obstacles. Um, mental health is, is an equity thing for us because of all the things that have been embedded. So how do we fix this? Places like the postpartum clinic, right? <laughs> how do we actually close the gap where everyone has equitable access to postpartum support, to mental health support, to breastfeeding support, to formula support, choose whatever you want. Bring equitable care when it comes to lactation. You're going to have to, again, understand where we've been to know where we need to go. If we don't understand how things have been um, marketed to us or to the communities, if we don't understand the history. So um, the history of why it's so complicated, um, then we're never going to create any type of equitable change, period, point blank. Um, you can't understand why it's a little harder for folks of color or Black people specifically um, when it comes to lactation, breastfeeding, and body feeding, um, and why that's so complicated and why it's so hard and why sometimes we don't even understand um, if you don't understand where it came from, where we came from. Um, so that's prioritizing the uninsured. So that's prioritizing um Um, access? What does accessibility look like um, within certain communities? Um, That's prioritizing getting more Black IBCLCs who understand the struggle, the history, and the pain. Um, It means providing, like you said, mental health support throughout that process as well. It means understanding the postpartum period for Black folks specifically, and then go specifically to other people as well. Like, that's what that means. And that's how, um, that's the only way it's going to change. So when I created the postpartum clinic, it was at the height of like, 
the pandemic, literally, when we first went into lockdown and I was running a group in North Alabama called um, Coloring Between Alliance Mothers, Col- Mothers of Color Breastfeeding Support. And the panic that that just happened and that just started to open up because they could not get access to any lactation counselor. They could not get access to anyone to help them understand postpartum, let alone help navigate postpartum. And so I created it and I was like, we're going to do this thing. And somehow, child, it just, it it happened. But (laughs) um, when I created it, I created it for that purpose, like to see that panic and folks crying and like all the things that this can of worms that opened up because there was just a lack of access um, that was equitable really confused the crap out of me. Um, I'm like, all this access in this industrial city, I call it Alabama or Birmingham specifically industrial city because it's mostly schools, hospitals, all these things. And there not be enough support. Help me help you to understand. (laughs) So um, when I created the postpartum clinic, it was definitely that. And so we ended up being able to help folks all over because of course it had to be virtual. But yeah, that's how we we did it. We prioritized parenting and mental health services to go along with lactation support, to go along with postpartum support. Um, We prioritize folks who are uninsured, but so what can we do who are uninsured, but they got a little money in their pocket, they could possibly put toward their, their health care when it comes to postpartum period, let's create a membership. And so you have 12 months worth of, of appointments and um, specific to postpartum and lactation and education, when it comes to newborn care, health and wellness. That's how I'm making equitable change in Alabama. Because unfortunately, if I want to see change for my folks, I have to create it. It can't fit the mold that has already been created within this Westernized society. I got to cut it out myself and say, you're going to accept this. Um, But it's work. Um, And you are taking donations to help reach other people and to spread the awareness and also offset some of the cost of people who don't have insurance but really could use the support where can people donate to you if they are like, wow, I need to give to this organization because that just touched my heart? Our GoFundMe, gofundme.com slash first black owned lactation clinic because it is. Um, but you can go there um, and you can just also just go to instagram.com slash um, the postpartum clinic and all the links are there. Um, we are a month out from our website becoming a full functional virtual clinic so right now it says we're coming back so you can't necessarily go to the website unfortunately but give, give it a couple of weeks and you'll be able to go there and you can donate through there as well all right Kayla thank you so much for being here with me today uh this conversation has turned into more than I could ever imagine thank you for sharing your wisdom with us I think this is a piece of lactation that people just don't talk about. And I think partly they don't talk about it because they don't know about it. And, you know, that's the name of the game here is let's talk about the hard things so that we can actually fix the problems that we're seeing. Um, We appreciate you so much being here. If anybody is interested in following us on Instagram, it is at Tranquility by Hehe. If you're looking to join the Birth Lounge, that's our membership for new and expecting parents. You can do that at thebirthlounge.com. And then below in the show notes, we will link everything that you need to get a hold of Kayla to follow her on Instagram and to donate to the postpartum clinic or to grab services from the postpartum clinic if that is something that you need. All right, guys, we will see you next time on the Birth Lounge Podcast. Until then, bye. Thanks for joining us. I'll see you next time on the Birth Lounge Podcast. Until then, head over to Instagram and find us at Tranquility by Hehe and give us a follow. You can also check us out at thebirthlounge.com.